All right, well, welcome uh, to this uh, conversation together. I'm Pastor Andrew Romine, Christ the King Apostolic Church here in O'Fallon, CTK O'Fallon, and I'm so glad to be joined by my good friend, uh, Eddie Andrews. And uh, Eddie- Hey, how are you? Hey, man, he's a fellow minister together in the United Pentecostal Church International, but you are a primary winner. Is that right? Did you win the primary? Yes. Awesome. Congratulations. I have won the, yeah, I, 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 the last race I won, political race, was way back a million years ago and uh, student government president. Uh, <laughs> and now uh, I am actually a primary winner, yes, for the first time ever. First time running. Congratulations. So tell us, uh, tell us what ticket seat you were, uh, you're running, campaigning on. Where at? Iowa House District 39. Uh, if you guys are familiar with uh, Central Iowa, that's just the northwest suburbs of, of Des Moines, Iowa, um, and uh, it's, great it's a great place. Yes, it's a great area. I just want to make it better. Amen. Amen. I love that. Uh, I've ridden my bike uh, extensively through that whole area, so uh, I love that. And and I do apologize because someone came and opened the door. So there's uh, our house is loud, and so I'm going to uh, <laughs> close the door just a second. Go ahead. I want to let you know about uh, Minister Eddie. He, uh, we've probably known each other, I guess now, going on 10 years, something like that, and uh, love his spirit. So he's a friend here today, and I Thank asked you. him just to come, and let's just talk about some things here that are going on. So I know we've already had this conversation, but we wanted to share that. So um, real quickly, with everything that's going on, uh, revolving uh, George Floyd, but then even before that, as we spoke, what were your first thoughts, feelings, reactions? Wow. Uh, my first yeah. reaction is that there are many. Um, it's one of those, um, my mind immediately starts thinking of five, six, seven, eight, twelve 12 things to say. Um, okay. For... For me, it shows that we have a lot of work to do uh, as a nation, uh, as communities, as churches. Um, it's really kind of exposed a lot that um, there are differences. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're called to, to minister, obviously yeah. to the church. But we're supposed to be, we're, we're not of the world, but we're in the world. And right. you know, the Bible says occupy. Let's, 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 right. our, our mission is to help people. Right. Amen. So. Um, I can thoughts, keep going. Your thought, yeah, I know your thoughts there. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I know this is nothing, you said before, it's nothing new. Yeah, I no, uh, I, you know, as I said the other day, the, the very first, the very first issue that the church had, um, you know, after the day of Pentecost, they're reaching the lost, their mm -hmm. souls are being added. And then the very first issue, probably issue was, was ethnicity. And we've all know that, um, you know, ethnos against the ethnos is one of Matthew 24, you know, what's going to be going on, uh, ethnicity against ethnicity, even though it's translated nation against nation, but um, it, you know, it really, it was, it was an ethnicity problem. Yeah. Um, Christians and the Jews, um, that we say, um, and I don't believe people were purposefully trying to uh, discriminate, I guess the word we would use now, they're not purposely, they weren't necessarily purposely trying to discriminate, but it probably, and we don't know all the details, but it was probably was a misunderstanding. You guys, we think this way, you guys think this way. There's probably some cultural misunderstanding yeah. that you needed. Just think about this. It, you needed men full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom to handle <laughs> that kind of stuff. So there yeah. was stuff going on. Think about that. Right. Yeah. 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 For sure. So well, it's been I, going along. Yeah. This, this isn't a new topic to the church. It began in the church, I guess. 
in the issue of reconciliation because I don't know if historically, I mean, I, I don't think we've seen ethnicities come together anywhere. That is the testimony, I think, of faith, of our faith and of the church. Uh, when you read the history books, it was nation conquering nation. Um, the church really becomes the first, I guess, not, melting pot's not the right word, but a uh, place where, where they're, they're joined yeah. together in unity. So, yeah, I'm motivated by, uh, I'm motivated by Galatians chapter three. And I've been saying this a lot. Um, we'll continue. Paul says there's neither Jew nor Gentile bond nor free male nor female, which that's an interesting thing. He wasn't discrediting the way God made us, uh, but he is letting us know there's no advantage or disadvantage. We could even use the word privilege. Um, there's no privilege to anybody. So if you're full of the Holy Ghost uh, in the body of Christ, you're my brother and sister. You, Absolutely. You, you know, you can pray for me, preach to me, bless me, be my mentor. You're not disqualified. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, another thing, again, since we're talking about friends, you know, just, just yeah. us, that's friends yeah, yeah. here. So I was talking with a, I gave a speech yesterday at a, at a rally and we kind of had an after, um, by the way, my senior pastor came and first lady and a couple of the members came to showed up. Awesome. Um, had, um, and afterwards we kind of had a, an after get together kind of thing with all the, some of the speakers and participants and, um, and this question, you can't help but address this question, right? It's in the news. Everybody's talking about it. What are you thinking about it? You're, you're a black guy. How do you see it? And, and so what I started to give like a, what I thought was, um, was a, a quick backdrop review. Um, and I was surprised things that like, Almost every black person in America knows these names and knows these situations, right? Like by the back of our hand, and literally half the people there, third of the people there, had never heard, never wow. heard of these things. Wow. Um, and so, what I think is a ten-second quick review. You know, remember that all these things happened in the next. You know six to eight days, right? You had yeah. Arbery, you had Amy Cooper, and they're like, who's Arbery? Who's, who? Wow. Okay. Uh, well, who's Amy Cooper? Mm -hmm. And who's the, you know what I mean? And all these right. things, and who's yeah. Brianna? And it's like, okay, so this is like, now it turns into whatever I was talking about to get to that point, you start having conversations about each one. And, oh, I never knew that. I never knew that. And it's just, wow. it just shows that things that, sometimes affects one community is like completely foreign you're you're literally in a different world yeah uh never never came up yeah wow yeah so that was a really interesting uh thing and and um another question that came up and i think we talked about this i um i think you asked me the first time and i never i never um I never thought about it. You ask, well, are there, you know, when you guys are handling these situations downtown with all these protesters, mm -hmm. what does that look like? And are the church yeah. members there? And, um, you know, there's a lot of pastors there, um, but they're all one color. You know, they're, they're, they're 95% yeah. black people and, and a few Latinos. Yeah. Wow. who are actually help helping down, you know, quiet the crowds down. And wow. it's just like, there's two different worlds and two expectations and two different um, points I'm of glad, view, I guess. I, I'm glad you brought that up because I think that is an issue where we have to be intentional. Galatians six and two says, bear ye one another's burdens. So, uh, you know, as um, a person that lives in the Metro East St. Louis or Fallon, Illinois, you know, I'm not concerned about, say, necessarily the policies and politics that are happening everywhere else, but as a part of the body of Christ, 
I number one am. And uh, immediately, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of all, all my friends, thinking of you. Hey, are you okay? What's going on? Bear one another's burdens. And I think it comes back. We talked about relationships. And one of the, uh, one of the realities is, is, you know, I have friends that live in rural places like, let's say, rural Montana. If you've ever been to rural Montana or Manitoba or Saskatchewan, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's impossible uh, to understand what New York City's like if you've never left a place like that. I mean, I live in St. Louis and it's nothing like uh, New York City. So people sometimes don't, here, here's my point, people sometimes, they, their experience doesn't back up what they're seeing and so they dismiss yes. it. And I think that that's where biblical, yes. biblically we've got to be intentional and a major roadblock roadblock to relationships in the church is when we deny or dismiss our brother and sister's experience. Oh my, oh my. Um, there was a, there was a, a minister. Uh, obviously I'm not going to say their name. You know, this minister, they're not a pastor, but um, I remember one time this person had told me there's no such thing as racial profiling mm -hmm. or actually I was listening to it. I think he said it, so I could hear it. I, I don't think he was technically talking to me. Yeah. Uh, and I just thought, am I really going to have to like, should I, should I go into detail or should I just ignore this? Um, and I think his reason was because his, his, someone that he knew um, had received a crazy ticket from uh, an officer who may have had a bad day kind of thing. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, dude, man, I got 10 more, 12 more, 15 more where that comes from. Right. Um, and so I, I just, you know, rather than ask questions, rather than make your experience the definitive absolute, this doesn't happen because it doesn't right. happen to you or nobody, you know, um, why not ask an open-ended question and say, yeah. does this happen? Or what do you feel about this? Or what's your experience right. um, to somebody who may have seen that? Uh, cause I, yeah, I've had a very interesting, uh, you know, uh, a number of experiences. Okay, that, so yeah, so hold go that ahead, thought because I want you to share your experiences for anybody that's gonna that's gonna catch this later on who may be coming from a place of they've never encountered it or they just don't see it. Uh, sec, uh, First Corinthians thirteen and seven, uh, or says that uh, love believes all things hmm. and it's the chapter on love you know all yeah. this stuff. of course you can speak in tongues but if you don't have love you're nothing but this is love hopes all things and endures all things you know but it says love believes all things uh some some translations say that love puts faith has faith in all things so if i love you as my brother and you tell me an experience that I haven't experienced and I just disregard it and throw it out. Um, first of all, that's not, that's not an act of love. And I can never bear your burdens. I can never rejoice. I can never pray. I can never see that. So I, I haven't experienced the things we've talked about this for, for years. Yeah. You've told me, I mean, I know where you live, a uh, beautiful area, great place. And, how many times have you been pulled over in the last 10 years? I don't know. It sounds like a bad uh, Eddie Murphy movie, you know, from the old days or a <laughs> Kevin Hart movie. It sounds like a bad script, right? I've, uh, I've been stopped literally on cruise doing 65 in a 65, 54 yeah. on cruise in a 55, uh, 30 in a 30, another 30 and a 30, um, wow. uh, once while parked at a stop sign, two parked, um, I, once I was picking up my daughter, or niece, my, who, she's my niece daughter, you know, she, yeah, yeah. we helped raise her, but my niece from work one time and officers swarmed and said I was speeding. Um, once, my favorite one is one where, I, um, I was actually relaying this story to two officers yesterday, um, how I literally was stopped at a gas station, parked at a gas station where yeah. 
an officer said, hey, I just heard on the radio that there was a black guy in a red car speeding. Wow. Yeah. There you go, buddy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, handcuffed, uh, taken down to, and this is the even weirder story wow. part. Uh, if that's weird, not weird enough. Think small town Iowa. Yeah. Uh, this isn't Des Moines. This was, you know, halfway to right. Omaha. Right. And um, uh, handcuffed, went to go see the judge. It's one of those uh, towns or county seats where there's more than, there's, it's a shared judge. And you can't even, you literally cannot even get your charge until you see the judge. And the judge had just left. No. And so you had to wait till next week wow. for him to come back. Wow. wow. So I lost a contract because an officer stopped me wow. from at a gas station. So, yeah, these weird, and I mean, there's more uh, where that's come from, but th that's probably the weirdest one. Um, that one of several weird ones. Yeah. That, and that's, see, that's, that blows my mind. Um, that's, I don't know. That's just yeah. incredible to, to think about. So uh, maybe, okay. Since I'm, since I'm talking weird stories and this is just driving, right? This is just yeah. driving. Yeah. I had a contract in, in Marshalltown and you may you know, Marshalltown is roughly 45 minutes to an hour from Des Moines. I yeah. A contract road, there for, road, uh, Ragbri went through there the year I did Ragbri. That's right. You are an athlete. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You're no, an no. outdoors guy. How about that? Yes, I am an outdoors guy, but I'm not an athlete by any means. <laughs> so this guy, um, uh, I kind of won the case, and I kind of didn't, um, because I actually took this this officer to, to, uh, to court um, for uh, so many traffic tickets. And uh, to the he got to the point that he literally would not give me my trap my license back because he was just going to use it for the next time. Wow! And um, so I take it to court and uh, I request a jury trial, and of course, you know, small town Iowa, mm -hmm. you know, like this is a wise guy here. You're not going to have a jury trial over a traffic ticket. Uh, sir, I'm I'm quoting the, the Sixth Amendment to a judge, you know, like okay. I have the right to a jury trial. Wow. And uh, he says, dude, if you want to, if you want to have this, you're going to have it right now. So I do my best Prairie Mason impression. Um, and uh, apparently I, I swung up and I apparently hit something. And so um, the judge pretty much thought I was an idiot until I asked the right question and the officer just said, yes, I, I, I have done that. And the off and the judge took over the case and said, wait a minute. So you've done this, this is real. And, uh, made him get up off the stand, give me my license back, uh, reprimanded him, gave him a tongue lashing. Wow. But guess what? Those tickets are still mine. They still are on my record. Wow. Uh, it affects your life insurance. It affects everything, things that you don't even think about. So yeah, it happens. And, um, and so I think in my, I think when you, you talk about what's going on in, in the, in the world right now, in terms of protests and so on and so forth. Yes, it's for, it's because of the George F Floyd case, but it's because of everything else. It's, it's like, there's 12 things underneath that iceberg that that have caused a lot of frustration. It's been a buildup, and I think you used the word a flashpoint. Yeah. Uh, the other day. So. Yeah. Now I know you're you're uh, you know uh, running to affect change in your local community. So we are praying, you know, God's speed in that, uh, uh, whatever the Lord's will there um, for you. And I'm excited about the prospects of that. I hope this. Yeah, I, I hope His will is to win. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, yes, uh, for sure. Um, where you were encouraged the other day when I was talking to you, uh, you had a tone of optimism. So share that, share that with us. Well, what I what I think is, um, we've kind of alluded to this already, but a lot of times when the stories that I just shared, yeah. Um, uh, those aren't like casual conversations that you have with people who don't share your 
same skin tone, right? You just right. You usually don't just say, hey, guy, you know, I got stopped the other day and this happened. Like, dude, what? That can't be real, right? Like, yeah. um, but I think over the last eight or 10 days, right before that, I think there was enough buildup that, uh, to, that told a lot of people who would not even be paying attention that, yeah, this stuff does happen. Yeah. Um, and because of that, you know, with, uh, I mentioned earlier, the Amy Cooper case. Um, right. And, and for those of you guys who don't know that, that's, that was a, um, the Caucasian lady who checked all the boxes uh, that you might think wouldn't do this, but I mean, you know, she's a Democrat. She checks all the, you know, the letters, the LGBT, the black, I'm down with this, da, 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 da. And yet for no reason other than, I mean, for no valid reason, right? she knew to call 911 and tell this guy, so like, dude, you, you know, take the camera off or um, I'm going to call 911 and tell them that an African-American man is harassing me and threatening my life. And it's clear, like literally while she's on camera. Right, yeah. And so all these things, like, and I've experienced very similar things, like on a regular, semi-regular basis, not a regular basis, but in, in, Let me just not in frequent basis. You're an upstanding, like the most, like I'd love, I mean, <laughs> you're the nicest guy in the world. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm serious. Yeah. Like, Thanks. So when I know you and you, it's just unbelievable. So sorry to interrupt. Yeah. You. I just wanted to make yeah, sure. Yeah. So, so, and I'll get back to your question, but yeah, just on that point, we have a, we have a person in the neighborhood, um, you know, who's called the police on us because uh, they didn't like the yeah. sound coming out of our, our air conditioning. They've called the police on us because we had kids over and one of them left the door open. We've had uh, their, they've cursed it. Uh, our 10 year old here yeah. uh, because and said, I'm going to, you don't deserve a dog. I'm going to call the police and have the dog, have them take your dog away. Yeah. And uh, because we parked our car, our car on the street instead of, you know, the, all the other cars that are on the street, you know? And so we, we, and so I can relate to the, to the Amy Cooper situation because it's yeah. silly. I mean, but at the same time, you don't want people showing, with guns showing up at your house because right, someone right. else is frustrated yeah. or you are fearful or you're threatened by that person. So yeah, it, it, like I'm not going to threaten anybody. Right. And so the opportunity comes because these seemingly crazy stories mm -hmm. that, you know, we're saved, sanctified, full of the Holy ghost, water baptized, you know, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> As the song says, tear it at the altar till the Holy Ghost came. You know? <laughs> um, and, you know, you're all about building the kingdom. And then, you know, you don't want people to say, well, you know, Eddie's in jail because X, Y, Z happened, you know, until right. tomorrow. Uh, you know, that's, that's not a story you just want to say. But when I, when the optimism comes because um, everybody can see this. And, and anytime you have an opportunity, or excuse me, anytime you have facts laid out, it's an opportunity to do something yes. about it. Yes. And um, I've had uh, more calls. Uh, yesterday, I've had um, uh, one young lady who says, well, is there anything that our church can do? I'm like, and she says, well, why don't we come down to one of the protests and sing? And other people were like, I don't know. I'm like, do it do it like just um because if people are heard you know if they if they feel you uh even if they think you're stupid you know what i mean yeah. if they feel you they'll appreciate it amen um um you know and there was a i don't want to call it any specific names or anything like that in our, in our specific city but one of the leaders Somebody says, oh, well, yeah, they don't even want to hear from him because X, Y, Z. I'm like, yeah, they're saying that, but that's just like talking to your mom or dad. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you get mad at your mom, but they're listening to this guy because they feel him wow. and he's there. He's there. Yeah. Um, and they, they know that 
even if they disagree with this guy, they know he's for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's what we have to do as a church. We have to be for people. Amen. And yes. And that's not he. That we have to be there. Like <clears throat> if you know, we always say, uh, you know, there was the the good old quote by the oh shoot, I forgot his his name, but the guy who a famous bank robber and they uh apparently this there's dispute whether this actually happened but the quote is that uh why did you rob the bank why do you keep robbing banks he's like well that's where the money is why wouldn't i like yeah. where yeah. else would i rob the money from you like right, right. you gotta understand the question and so <laughs> like if we're gonna help people we have to go where, the people, where people are. are amen and that's yeah. where they are amen I agree with that. I think I think it's got to start in the church. I think if we uh, if we can't feel one another within the church, um, and that's what we we're talking about with the love, uh, Corinthians, Galatians, bearing yes. burdens. If we can't have that in the church, we'll never be able to affect our community outside of the church. Yes, sir. And so um, we have to. I think that's one of the things the church should always work on. On that note, real quick. Uh, what are some things you see the church or a church or your local church doing right? Uh, what are some things we can still work on just with regard to just the church within the church, the church body? With regards to this specific time and protest and so on and so forth or in general? Well, I think, I, I think maybe both because, uh, you know, I don't, I'd hate to see this just be an event in the history books and, and it not, really be a climate that we okay. address so um i like what you said earlier be intentional okay um and i'll i will expand on that um uh do see color <laughs> um and i i say that because a lot of times people say well i don't see color well i we're do colorblind <laughs> yeah yeah right. we're colorblind yeah. Well, and that sounds great, but sometimes if you are not intentional, then you'll just say, well, why aren't there any blacks here? Why aren't there any Asians here? Because you're not intentional. Right. Um, and yes, it would seem like, and, and, you know, there's, I've got a friend who's written a book about this. So there's lots of, there's volumes of, of volumes of, of things to talk about there. But the point is you need to, be intentional um the um and be down there uh, i'm not saying okay in our in our city when i say be down there i'm referring to a, our local situation i have no idea how things are operating in other cities but right now we uh, I, i'm not in charge of this i'm just part of this one of many 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 people uh, i'm not even i wouldn't even consider myself leadership of this i'm not but um there's there's a group of adults mainly adults who are monitoring protests and and where this one is and where that one is make sure there's no conflict or try not to uh yeah. we're down there literally sometimes with our arms uh locked so that our kids don't break the line and then they get gassed which means all of us are going to get gassed um right. and uh, staying out there and listening to, and debating and arguing. And you got to understand, like, um, we do have an element who, whose first response is like, you know, one kid broke a window two days ago who probably isn't even from your city um, yeah. because there's a whole lot of that going on. Yeah. And, and then, and these kids know it too. I mean, uh, right. They're, okay. they, they're like, dude, don't do that because you're going to mess it up for everybody. All right. And, and they will tell them, you know, and, but you have the, an element who's like, that's their problem. That's those kids and send in the military, you know, yeah. and, um, and that is, I mean, that's a valid, that's a valid point. I'm not going to say. Uh, obviously, if the whole thing was 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 violent, that's that's like, dude, shut it down. Right. But and we see this, they see it, 
and most of the officers understand and most of the community leaders know that a lot of the violence is, is usually in many cities, not just our city, but I hear it in Cedar Rapids or Philadelphia and Minneapolis. A lot of those people that are, are really causing the real harm are not, not all, but a lot of them are not from those local areas. And, and so when I say be down there, a lot of us are down there trying to help our children. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter. Well, it should matter the color because they're right. not just our kids. They're, they're our kids collectively. Right, right. But only a certain segment are showing up. And, you know, you could say I don't have a dog in the fight because my kids are, um, are grown kind of. But all of us as a community and as a church, they're our youth that we need to make sure are heard. Yeah. Um, and um and listen to and they have a valid they have valid issues like we do have racial issues right yeah you know this is it's an it's an axe six moment yeah. right where let's get men and women of 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 wisdom mm -hmm. and be there listen to people it just not gonna hurt you to to have kids yell in your face <laughs> <laughs> And debate yeah. passionately. I shouldn't say that like that, but you know what I mean. That's yeah. we're loud. You know, we'll yeah. say something, they'll say something. And one other thing too, let me just say this. One uh I was reminded by the way where the word riot act comes from, you know. Read you the riot act. And um we were there one night and uh apparently the time was up and they kinda let us know in advance. Like and then at that point, whether whether it was midnight or one o'clock or whatever, we were on state grounds. And they said, you know, you're now in violation of XYZ code. Um, we're going to disperse this crowd in X minutes. And my car was parked right across, like literally right down the steps. And I'm thinking, it's maybe a good time to move my car and come right back. And so I moved my car. And on the way back, I was talking to these you know, it, we had a lot of spare time to talk for those two minutes, you know, as I'm walking back. And so I asked this guy, I said, well, what would success look like to you? You know, you, you've been here all this time. What does it look to you? What does it look like? If X, Y, Z happened, what would, what would you consider a success? And the first thing he said was, you know, people are listening to us, but they're not really hearing us. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, well, how about this, bro? I'm listening to you. I'm hearing you. And so we chatted and he wasn't quite ready to give like a bullet point. So, which is kind of funny because they've been out there all the time and they don't have like, this particular guy didn't have like 12 bullet points. <laughs> Others do, but he didn't. Yeah. And so I gave him and I, I contacted um, the house majority leader. Who I just who had just who was there at my victory party that night. Oh yeah. And and I said, well, would you mind if long story short, the details are are that we got these guys together to because if you want stuff happening, I told the other guy, like, why are you asking me what should I do? Why don't you ask the guys who have the problem oh. what they want? If they're down here, why don't why are you asking, why are you filtering it through me? Right. Um, why don't why aren't you down here? Um, and, but the, the short of it is we were able to get these guys together and start talking. Um, awesome. And these are, you know, you wouldn't say this is a leader, but these are people. And he said, well, can I bring this guy? Can I bring this young lady? Uh, so now it's three of us. Um, how about that? And I, to be honest, I need to follow up on that l later today, um, to see how that went. And, um, but the point is, why can't we listen to each other? Right. You don't have to always agree, but listening is a, is a good start. I agree. I, I, I feel like I uh, had, had another, have had several other conversations and one with my uh, neighboring pastor here in O'Fallon, Bishop Wells, and, and he made the statement um, that uh, when I asked him, you know, we've, first of all, we've got to listen 
um, to the spirits leading for us in everything that we do. Um, and I think we have to listen to one another. We have to listen to one another and listen to those that are hurting. Jesus did that. That was ministry 101. Uh, he went and he, he sat down there. Uh, in fact, one of, the, one of the greatest things the Lord showed me years ago in Ezekiel, I believe it is Ezekiel, before he goes, I was either Ezekiel or Jeremiah, but I think it was Ezekiel. Um, he goes, the Lord calls him to, um, I think it was down by the river, uh, Chabar, and he sits, I think he sat with them for seven days before he spoke with them. So God yeah. calls him and says, I've got a word for you. You got to prophesy. But when he goes there, he doesn't just go and start. He sat down. He sits with them mm. for seven days. He didn't open his mouth for seven days. Mm. The whole time he had a word, the whole time he had the answer. Uh, but the point was they weren't ready to receive that. And so he sits, and I'm wondering how much more effective his ministry was because he was able to listen yes. to them. So yes, wow. we have the gospel and we have the word, you know, and, and we can, you know, give it to them, but how we, you know, present that. And I think that goes on back to relationships too. Yeah. Um, the, we had a problem. Oh boy, that's been a week or so ago now. I can't even remember now. It's kind of blurred. Um, but about a week ago was the first issue that we had in Des Moines. Um, and it was kind of different because none of what we call the usual suspects, you know, the, 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 the leaders of our community, what we call our leaders, uh, had set up this rally. Um, and so we didn't know you know, who was behind it or whatever. And uh, turned out it was a, sound like a decent rally. Mm -hmm. uh, but afterwards, uh, there were some things, uh, you know, we started seeing Facebook lives or people getting calls. And one of the first things we do is like, okay, um, uh, I, I don't want to give a lot of de personal details, but we, may, we, we wanted to make sure that the right people were down there. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's even people who had just left were like, what? I was just there. Um, or another night, you know, um, I think the next night after that, someone called and said, Eddie, get down here, man. There's, there's, you know, whatever's going on here. And, um, and it took a long time to find it because there were so many things going on and it's all peaceful. It's all peaceful here. It's all peaceful here. And I'm like, dude, where are you at? You telling me it's here. Um, and out of maybe five, 600 people, there were like five or 10 people way over there. And, you know, if you were looking at Facebook live or the news, that's, that's all that was there. Wow. And none of the peaceful stuff. Right. And some of these guys didn't even know that was, I literally was looking for it and couldn't find it. Wow. Uh, I drove around like four or five times. Wow. Um, and, but the point is they called somebody or we called somebody the first day um that already had a relationship with the community mm -hmm. we didn't even think to call anybody else like who are we going to call like why would you call somebody who doesn't already have a relationship and so um yeah it's important to have the relationship spend the seven days there as you as you reference yeah. spend the time there beforehand um uh, you know before there's a crisis sometimes yeah amen well, hey, I know we've been on here for a little bit, and I know we could yeah. talk forever, but uh, I know we got yes, and everything. So, thank you for I, thank you. I wanted to, I didn't, we didn't get to, but those two, those two studies in Iowa, man, uh, I know we don't. Probably oh have, yeah, I don't know how. Uh, you do you want to like a minutes, uh, quick forty-five seconds? Yeah. Okay, just quickly. I don't know. Okay, keep me on. Keep me if I get too too wired up here, <laughs> but. Uh, we talk a lot about racial profiling. Very few studies have actually been done. Two of them have been done by a, a, a professor in, uh, in Iowa, but over three or four cities, two of them were in Iowa, Iowa City and Davenport. And without going into detail, 
Uh, right. Two of the conclusions were that yes, racial profiling does occur. It does not occur if the person, if the officer can't see them. So think radar. You know, there are mm-hmm. you got the hair dryer from a bridge. They don't know what color you are. This is absolutely spot on the money. There's zero difference in 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 racial um, uh, traffic stops versus the makeup of the traffic itself. They okay. they studied the traffic for weeks. Yeah. Um, but if you can see them, there is a uh, significant, statistically significant difference. And if you go into even further detail, you'll find kind of what both sides kind of instinctively know that I'll just say, I don't know the exact number, but let's just say 95, 96, 97% of the officers, maybe even 98, are perfectly within the, they're, they're normal. They're the people who go there to do their job, um, but it's the the two or three percent that are like you start looking at the numbers and they're off the charts. Wow! Um, and it doesn't matter. Uh, and this is in taken into account, even though for those who are in like specific areas that might be, you know, where there might be specific problems. Right. You take that officer out, put another one in there and it just goes away. So it's those people who have an eye (laughs) for for attracting certain audiences. Uh, And and it just tells you that kind of what we instinctively know that most officers are there to to do their job, Mm -hmm. but it's the one or two, three or four that kind of throw off the stats. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That um, is obviously any number that's discouraging, um, but man, sometimes it seems like the uh, man. It seems like you you are our culture postures you in a position where you either are for or against, and it's all or nothing. And we have to oh, paint man. a broad brush. Yeah, and it's it's white or black. It's it's for police, against police, and it, it doesn't allow there to be, I think that kind of thinking doesn't allow, you're judging, you can't, we don't judge individuals by individuals. Yeah, yeah. If you're not for my issue, you're the devil. <laughs> yeah. I think misunderstandings, misinterpretations are uh, the devil's play yard, a playground. I, I think the enemy, man, he just takes those to task. And that's why I think relationships, intentionality, communication, just having discussions. I like what you said, you know, we can disagree. Uh, I heard somebody say the other day that disagreement does not equal disunity. Um, you know, unforgiveness does or, or not being willing to reconcile or, or love one another. I also Good. think, too, we have to be, we have to, uh, I like what you said by don't say you don't see color because that's who God made us. And, and that's beautiful. We're we're individuals. We celebrate that. And with that, we have different, uh, let's say taste and styles and personalities, but preference is not prejudice um, necessarily, you know, uh, just because, well, I like to do things this way or, or that, whatever, but indifference is not love either. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So, um, yeah, it, it, exactly. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, there's no secret that that I mean, just look at our house. I mean, our how our house is loud. I'm the quiet one in our family. <laughs> <laughs> he is, and, folks. He is, folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you know, yeah. That's just how we are. Uh, that's how we roll, man. We're, we're always doing something. We're always singing. We're always doing this. We're, we're a lively bunch. So, but others aren't necessarily that way. And that's cool. Yeah, that's right. So, well, Hey brother Eddie, I love you. And I appreciate, uh, your, your faith, your friendship, your courage. I appreciate what you're doing there in your local community and I pray in God's angels be with you, give you wisdom. Thank you and strength um of course i love your pastor and wife uh they're I'm all shocked 
<laughs> well, I was look. I, this gives me an opportunity to say, whoever's watching, uh, we love, we love, 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 love Pastor Andrew and Janelle. I mean, they are they are the real deal. Um, Thank you. We've we've shared a lot of discussions. I've actually called him for a couple things, uh, a couple times, and uh, they're just good people. Good people. Good people. Love well, that guy. Well, thank you, uh, bro. I love you and uh, praying for you. And uh, thank you for joining us here. So uh, if, ever, if you, you enjoyed this, uh, be sure to share this and uh, like this. Help us uh, just spread, spread some good, honest friendship, love, conversation, learn something from one another, and encourage someone else. So tell your family we said hello. God bless. Will do. And uh, Back at you, sir. All right. God bless. Thank We're going to sign off God here. Bless. All right. We'll Bye -bye. see you.